one, um, because the uh, committee is being held under the current COVID restrictions. Um, there's very limited space for the press and public to attend, um, and if they do, they'll be socially distanced. But as you can see, there's nobody but us here. Um, so I shall move on to item number one, which is apologies for absence. Do I have any apologies for absence? No. Councillor Johnson is uh, en route, but is currently stuck in uh, traffic uh, at South Ockenden, but will be here as soon as he possibly can. Uh, move on to item two, the minutes to approve uh, as a correct record of the minutes, the General Services Committee meeting held on the 15th of June 2021. Does anybody have any comments or corrections to those minutes? I'm seeing none. So with that, I move them. Are they seconded? Are they approved? Excellent. Item three, items of urgent business. I've not received any items of urgent business for this evening's meeting. Uh, moving on to item four, are there any declarations of interest in relation to the matters that we will be deciding this evening? I'm seeing none. So, oh. ah. I, I shall hold for a few seconds and allow Councillor Johnson to take his seat. You're in between the two at the front. And quite a fortuitous point to be uh, arriving declaration of interest. Have you got any declaration of interest, Councillor Johnson? No, none. Excellent. We'll move on to item five, which is paid leave for miscarriage, which can be found on the agenda, pages nine to 28. Uh, so with that, I shall pass over to uh, Michaela to introduce the report, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, so the report um, that you have with you um, sets out a proposal um, to provide a specific provision within the council's policy um, for paid time off um, for staff who may sadly experience a miscarriage. Um, so our existing policy um, does set out provisions for compassionate leave um, and also has a provision for a separate statutory parental bereavement leave. Um, however, there is nothing specific that actually covers um, uh, the, the instances where, where staff may suffer a miscarriage up to 24 weeks of pregnancy, so the parental bereavement leave um, is from 24 weeks of pregnancy onwards up to um, 18 years of age if someone was to lose a child. Um, we do obviously expect managers to, um, to support staff um, who may um, go through this, but at the moment there's nothing um, kind of strengthened within policy around it. So the proposal is set out um, within Appendix 1 at 29.7, um, and that essentially recommends um, the introduction of five days paid leave, which would be pro rata for part-time staff, as a day one right for employees who may suffer a miscarriage. Um, so the proposal essentially aligns with quite recent best practice um, that's been forthcoming around this um, and some comparator local authorities that, that have also introduced similar support mechanisms for staff. Um, so that's the recommendation that we have at 1.1 um, um, and I'm happy to take any questions. Uh, thank you, Michaela. Has any member got any questions for uh, Michaela in relation to this report? Councillor Kent? Yeah, it's just you've used Barkin and Dagenham as the comparator. Did you do any uh, work on comparators in the private sector? Uh, thank you, Councillor Kent. Um, so this is quite a new provision, I will say. So some of you may have seen um, some some recent companies that have um, introduced something similar in the press, but it is still something quite new. Um, so for, for our purposes, um, we reached out to other comparator local authorities, um, some private sector organisations um, that I've read about in the press, although not directly contacted, um, have done anything between about three days paid leave. And there are some organisations that are going as far as to do 10 days paid leave um, for each instance. Um, but we, we typically in HR use um, public sector and local authorities to obviously benchmark ours. And um, so that's why we've used Barking and Dagenham as the, as the comparator. But there are private sector companies doing, doing similar things. Councillor Kent, any further questions in relation to that? Or Come back. Any other member? Uh, Councillor Holloway. 
Yeah, thank you, and thank you for the answer to that question. Um, bearing in mind, obviously, the emotional effects of uh, miscarriage can last for you know, weeks, and if not a lifetime, but practically it's not uncommon for women post-miscarriage to bleed for about seven to ten days afterwards. So is it possible, therefore, to extend the leave until for t ten days rather than the week? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think this is a kind of baseline provision that we're looking to, to incorporate. Um, there are obviously other supportive mechanisms that are in place. What we're trying to do is obviously um, ensure that there's some consistency um, in terms of what our staff could experience. Um, but obviously, if an employee was suffering um, the kind of physical effects ongoing, obviously there is um, they could take periods of sick leave. Um, and managers would have, I suppose, what's the word that I'm thinking of, the discretion um, in terms of additional leave where circumstances um, would dictate that that was necessary. Um, but, but yeah, we've gone with the five days because the initial findings around what's out there is about comparable with that, but that's not to say that in certain instances it wouldn't be appropriate for additional leave to be, um, to be granted, and that is um, kind of at manager discretion. They would have those discussions with HR. Um, it's something we do currently um, with kind of compassionate leave, depending on circumstances, etc. So whilst um, this is fixed in policy, there will still be some flexibility around it, but it's really about trying to get that baseline provision in place. Councillor Lovett, come back. Yeah, thank you for that. I mean, I wouldn't expect, bearing in mind it is, you know, medically uh, clear that it is uh, between seven and ten days, so it can it can be extended. I wouldn't expect, bearing in mind this policy being in place, that any woman would have to then take sick leave, especially as this policy is in place. So I would assume if, you know, it is well documented, well founded medically, that it's ten days, I would expect under this policy discretionary that no woman would then have to take any of their sick leave outside of this. Yep, and it's worth noting as well, sorry, I should have made it clearer, that any um, sickness leave that is taken that's related to pregnancy or something like this would not be counted towards an employee's kind of entitlement, if that makes sense. It wouldn't count towards sickness absent triggers, so obviously it would be managed in a, in a compassionate way. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other member? Have you got anything they'd like to wish to add? Uh, Councillor Hebb? Not so much a question, but just to recognise that it, it, it is warming i think is the right word to use uh, that in 2021 we are trying to find more ways to be even further compassionate in terms of service conditions that are afforded to to employees that, that, that we have that we value um <clears throat> ultimately this is something which regrettably and unfortunately ha ha you know is something that is encountered by a number of people through any workforce and i think that the fact that there is also the secondary component in terms of spousal support to make sure that spouses are able to support people at home is equally a very compassionate thing that the authority is seeking to, to, to put into place. I think Councillor Holloway's points are you know, really valid. Um, and uh, yeah, like you say, um, Michaela, there should be that, that, that movement around as required in individual cases. But you know, just to echo my support for, for an approach which is literally compassionate to its core. I think Councillor Hebb, Councillor Coxall. Yeah, this, this is, um, I, I declare a slight interest here, because obviously my partner steered this through the legislation, so it is a bit, um, I shouldn't have, but it's really encouraging to see we've taken it up as it's come through, and I think, I like obviously, it's come again from uh, another MP, Essex MP, Will Quince's sad loss at that point. Uh, this has this, this come about, and he campaigned many years over this, and I'm glad we're taking it up finally now. Uh, thank you, Councillor Coxall. Uh, any other member? Councillor Kent? Yeah, I mean, I, same as everybody else, I've, I do, do welcome this. I, I think it's a forward-looking, progressive move, and, and it's the right thing to do. Uh, I would like, how, however, to move uh, 10 days rather than five days. I, I understand the point about uh, managers will have discretion. Uh, I just think that when somebody is in that situation, uh, they don't want to be relying on discretion. They want some certainty. I'd be far happier if discretion kicked in after that 10 days. So I, I will move uh, 10 days rather than five. Um, thank you, Before, but is there, a, is there a huge problem with those extra five days? Um, no, uh, not from a from a HR perspective. Um, obviously, potentially, um, 
it, it would be managed in terms of service impact, so obviously we would support employees through that. That would align um, to the parental bereavement provision, which is actually statutory, um, so, so it would align with that. Obviously, um, it, it potentially would have a service impact, but like we said, we wouldn't be rushing employees back anyway, so ultimately services will cover um, as necessary. Um, so yeah, no issue from, from our perspective. Okay, thank you, Councillor Hebb. Just, just building on, on Councillor Ken's point, I, if someone was, to, or when someone is sadly unfortunate enough to be in that situation with respects, it's highly unlikely that they would be returning to work on a 40 hour week on the Monday anyway, or five days, whenever it is, there would be a degree of phased return to work potentially. Um, you know, as people managers, we, we know that, we see that. So probably might be an idea to account for that. Um, that's kind of where my, my head's at. Okay, any other member want to speak on John uh, Kent's proposal? I think it's got quite a lot of merit, myself. Um, Councillor Massey, sorry, you've indicated, sorry. Oh, thank you. Um, I did, trying to get the back of my head was niggling, are we doing enough? So, um, on Councillor Kent's proposal, I'd, I'd fully support 10 days. Okay, any other member, oh, excuse me, over there. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, has any other member got anything to uh, add to this? No, so uh, the proposal is to move to 10 days, not five, and the recommendation um, uh, as outlined. So first of all, to 10 days, is that agreed? Agreed, agreed. Agreed. And then to the recommendation R1.1, unless there's anything else to add, um, that General Services Committee support the proposal uh, to provide a paid leave uh, provision for employees who suffer miscarriage, is that agreed? Agreed. agreed. Excellent. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, it's one of those policies you hope is not used that often. But I think um, moving to the 10 days was certainly uh, the right thing. It, it, as, as, as you said, Michaela, it does align um, all of these uh, terrible circumstances. OK, we move on to um, uh, item six on the agenda, which is Thurrock Regeneration Limited. That can be found on your agendas in pages 29 to 42. Uh, Councillor Cox, would you like to introduce your report, please? Hello there. Yep, um, we started this uh, process back in last back end of last year, um, and we brought uh, paper as we moved forward and promised in December where oh, there was an issue at this committee. And then, uh, just a background: the, uh, we then on January brought the paper back and appointed and promised a paper. Um, uh, the, the local elections got in our way for bringing it back before um, the local elections, and I brought it back at the first, the earliest convenience to bring it here today to actually set out where there's some options for this committee and a recommendation uh, where, where, where we should be. A bit of history, really, just to remind people on here, and, and maybe I think everyone here is fully aware of the, the, where, where TRL was, but when the administration took over, it, it needed to move forward at a pace with its housing delivery. We found that there was a conflict of interest continuously with the, issue, with the directors and the officers uh, being off, mainly officers for this council. It had become very difficult and when some of the officers had to resign without conflicts of interest. And that's why today, if you see on the paper, it's recommending a truly independent uh, director's board here. I'm open to suggestions here to how to, how to make sure that, them, that, that a small number of directors as it builds and as we hopefully it works and it, the pipeline of uh, land and availability comes through that's best for the cabinet to, um, to uh, offer to TRL as it goes through the new housing delivery approach, we will see then a in ever increase in size of that, of the TRL to actually deliver on our housing numbers to make sure this time it actually delivers the housing, which I think all of us want to see, high quality, low cost housing for our residents of Thurrock to reduce that housing number down in the HRA or other, or other low cost housing instead of landlords and make sure it's a, a good corporate landlord. Um, I put this paper in here, I'm open to suggestions when we move forward and how we move forward, but I suggest we, we move to a truly independent board um, to move forward, which is option one. And just for clarification, that's option one as outlined on page 32 at 4.5. Yes? Excellent. Thank you, uh, Councillor Cockshaw. Any, any, excuse me, my voice is going. Um, any member got anything they wish to ask uh, Councillor Cockshaw or to add? Councillor Kent? Yeah, just to say that this, this is one that I think we all want to, to see work. Uh, I, I still believe it's a, a really good model, really innovative, will return money to, to, to the general fund, uh, will create housing and, and will get difficult sites moving. 
you know, that's why it was created, to try and move on stalled sites. Uh, I, I would uh, second Councillor Coxall's recommendation of option one. I think option one is the, uh, the, the, the best option in, in front of us. Uh, and don't think we really need to make too much heavy weather of this. We can just uh, uh, agree, I hope, and move on. Uh, thank you, Councillor Kent. Um, Councillor Hebb. Thanks, Leader. Um, yes, I, no, I, I'm equally in sponsorship of option one. I think the one thing that I think our role as shareholders, effectively, as GSC, I, I think we probably all consider cementing the reports back to this group. I, I think if I reflect on GSC, I don't really remember many conversations around TRO over the, the, the previous years. I, personally, uh, while I, I see every merit of going to an independent thing, I do think there needs to be that, that scrutiny component, if, if that's the right expression. Um, so I, I think I would probably be minded to move a recommendation that we insist is perhaps not the right word either, but request a quarterly or a free monthly or a frequent uh, shareholders update at this forum, but just to try and cement that in place to make sure that we do get that that this opportunity to review performance and everything associated with it. I don't know what colleagues around the table think, but that's kind of where my head is at. Other than that, in terms of option one, yeah, fully on board. Councillor Cox, I'll look at you if you want to come back I, on, I on am, those. I, I'm happy with that. It, at the moment, is a yearly update into Cabinet. Um, I'm happy that, that uh, a regular thing we have the shareholders and a re review of where it's going. I think more scrutiny, more spotlight is exactly where they are. And I think if, it, if the other committees minded, I would happily to bring back a, a, a an update regularly. I don't know if quarterly, maybe when it, when it started or a reg uh, like I don't know if you want to put that date quarterly, but uh, at least coming back to this board instead of yearly as well as cabinet and here, I think it could be a, a worthly thing. And as pipeline increases, hopefully, we can get housing delivery approach. There could be a good answer then to a good transparency to see we get to deliver these housing numbers. Yeah, I fully agree. I don't, <coughs> I, I think back to the improvement board days where um, people said, you know, don't spend so much time you know, quantifying it. There's nothing to quantify. So but by sort of putting uh, a quarterly fixer on it, I, what I don't want to be doing is coming back here every quarter to have a meeting and say nothing's happened. I think when we get to the six-month point and nothing's happened, you know, there's going to be cause for concerns. But I do feel that more reporting back to here is, is a must. So I, I will happily be say a regular occasion unless everybody says no every three months. Councillor Hebb? I mean, uh, yeah, you're quite right. The frequency weren't something I'd overly considered, even whether it's like a mid-year touch point and then the, the annual update, if that makes sense, more than happy with something like that. Um, okay, uh, Councillor Kent? Yeah, I, th I think we all kind of understand the spirit, and, and Shane's right. You, you, you know, there has to be that that strong lock from from uh, di directors to, to to shareholders. I think the form of words might be that report back uh, w when a form of words that says when they've got something to report, they report back, but that won't be on less than a six monthly basis. That's much um, better yeah, than pre I put it. Pre pretty, pretty much just like that. Kind of form of words. <laughs> And, and I like it when, like, nearly, well, probably every single one of us in the room are thinking, there's no point in reporting if there's nothing to report, but you do need to report at least every six months. So, um, Ian, can you come up with some nice, well, I think there is the general agreement there that that's the, the view we want to take, whether or not we have to sort of, you know, formalise it right now and rubber stamp it, rather than just saying that they it, they will report back every at least every six months or when regular. Ian? Uh, I'll, I'll go to um, Ian first. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, within the report, it referred to uh, the fact that we'll be setting up directors' letters, so setting terms and expectations for the directors. We can certainly incorporate within that and or within our performance management of TRL more generally that sort of regular reporting, but no less than six months. Um, and we can certainly have the no less than bit in there. And I, I think it's a level of detail which we can work together to actually get some kind of greater understanding and detail of what that will be to push it more frequently than six monthly, but certainly no problem on that. Oh, sorry, Councillor Coxall? Yeah, um, so we can have a truly independent. I'm, I'm happy to maybe report back as the directors we go out to 
um, wide, wider bodies to look for these independent people. I think maybe at that point it would be good to come back then when we see the names of the directors to make sure they are uh, an arm's length as, as described in option one. And I'm really happy that would be a good opportunity then. Uh, I talked to, spoke to the monitor officer early beforehand and maybe we will get involved in the recruitment process and have interviews like we would do directors. But at that point, when the names are there, maybe that point to show come back and show where the delivery arm is and then from there hopefully cabinet has got some idea on public where, where we're going with the land assembly and we can before we move to the next stage which is delivery would that be a fair so in the autumn would be a good point and then start again at that regular occurrences yeah i'm, I'm seeing um again nods from every elected member on here so um this is a a really good step forward um is there anything else anyone would like to add uh uh, Councillor Johnson. Thank you, Chair. Um, I agree with everything you said here. I think let's hope <clears throat> this is a very this is this 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 can work. But as 49 councillors, we do have to sit here and take some responsibility about where we build. We can't lose that fact. That, that that's always been a problem. We mustn't lose that. We must get that right. I think that's more about releasing. The, the, the way we release land, which obviously, as, as we know, is coming up again, again on Cabinet on Wednesday, and the agreed process that we already have. Uh, and of course, there's nothing stopping if, if a particular block of land that TRL gets wind of and is in a position to afford, that they wouldn't be able to buy it and build. Uh, and that would be, that, that's why there's the truly independent arm aspect of it. Anything else you want to add, Councillor Cox, because you look like you wish to add something before I close and move? Just to let everyone know that obviously a TRL, we changed the terms and TRL stands, that it's not just a housing delivery arm, it's actually got, it can deliver our commercial arm as well and our commercial aspects of it. So there is a major uh, regeneration plans and that, and the, the TRL is not be, be from bidding into commercial, commercial opportunities and it does need to have some commercial opportunity and community directorships as we move forward because it is part of that as well. And say we want to deliver some new, if we get the go ahead, there's a, there's a new um, river, river centre that we're hoping to get, the river activity centre. Say we want to redevelop the ten side if we end up deciding that, and we want to, there's new theatre provision needed. Say we want to deliver new beaches and move and create the new jetties. There is opportunities there, and it does need that independent arm to make sure this TRL does find, not just, the, it's got to find not just the most hardest sites to deliver, but there is the opportunity to make sure it actually, it actually truly does regenerate the area and bring some revenue back into the housing revenue account, no, no, the general fund. I'm sorry, please don't change that to the housing revenue account. Okay, in that case, I'm going to move the two recommendations at 1.1 1 .1 and 1.2 at page 30 with the amendment of the uh, no less than six months for the reports back to us. Is that agreed? Agreed. Excellent. Thank you very much for a um, very fast and swift meeting uh, with full agreement throughout. So with that, I'll close the meeting at 18.23. Thank you.